every time I really feel like Sajim, the 25% minority shareholder for the club of Man United holding an interview, I'm all ears. I just can't wait because I know that he's going to speak some sense. Has he been watching our channels, especially the fan channels of Pan United? We've always come out and really spoken out things and <clears throat> the pundits in the mainstream of Ghana hate to say, we are radical, you know? We are we are we are we are fans that are really very 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 radical and we don't really want the glazers to thrive you know <clears throat> but i think now they are really ashamed from what they used to tell the people after Ineos is coming out to really replicate exactly what you're talking about and <clears throat> sir jim Radcliffe has come out and really said why he snubbed the clean Mbappe and why he cannot really allow this deal to happen this is my new owner for the club of man united he's doing lots of things <clears throat> off the pitch onto the pitch so a lot is happening in between him and the club of manchester united welcome to the united matters channel how are you guys and where you're watching us from i go by the names of rock and david he has gone ahead and really pointed on to the incompetency of bruno fernandez in the team of man united and why he believes there is a missing jigsaw into the position that that guy plays in for the club of man united then the other story <clears throat> is all about him naming the best player of United of all time. So, let's see close to 300 likes much in this video as you guys continue to obviously come in through and do the needful. Rock and David is my name. You can as well call me R&D. The Muslims, Ramadan Mubarak, <coughs> to the Christians, we cover you all in the precious blood of Jesus Christ and may the living true God bless you abundantly as you people thrive to reach the next level of your success. Then, Sir Jim Ratcliffe, came in through and was asked he said i would rather find the next clear mbappe rather than spend <clears throat> a fortune in trying to buy success it's not that clever it's not that clever it is buying mbappe in a way buying mbappe in a way much more challenging is to find the next mbappe or the judy bellingham that is such directly for you so he is this kind of man who believes in really building talent he has gone ahead to come in through the club of Man United where Eric Ten Hag is the man at the helm of doing that business. He came in through the club of Man United and however much he was going to spend in and bring in players like <coughs> Tarell Malasia, Lisandro Martinez, Anthony, Casimiro, Mason Mount, Andrew Onana, Rasmus Hoyland. You understand? He has gone ahead to sign in seven players on a permanent ever since he came through the club of Man United and... All those players for me are really not doing bad. But the hugest achievement uh, Eric Ten Hag is going to hit to get is the coming in through and getting in players from the academy and ushering them into the first team for the club of Man United. That is the most important thing that Ten Hag is going to hit to do. And if you are <coughs> the new 25% minority stakeholder for the club of Man United, and you you've talked about looking for the next Kylian Mbappe, for the next Judy, Judy Bellingham. The manager of Man United has already gone ahead to discover those. In Ganacho, you can get the next Mbappe. <laughs> that is it. That's why Real Madrid have gone ahead to show interest in him. In Kobe Menu, you've already had the next. You've you've already gone ahead to have the next Judy Bellingham. So the two players are going ahead to obviously talk about. Are already at Man United and they've been integrated in the team of Man United <coughs> by Eric Ten Hag. He has gone ahead to offer them the debuts for the club of Man United and they're really doing great. This is where I love this man. And when you go to the financial point of view, uh, Kylian Mbappe, a player in the stature of Kylian Mbappe, can cost 150 million pounds. Now, 150 million pounds. You can get a Kylian Mbappe who is an already made product and you're, and you're going to bring him in to a very huge salary that is really astronomical. For example, when Mbappe comes in at Man United, you know what happens? Mbappe can find himself <coughs> asking for a salary of like £600,000 a week. You know? That means it's going to affect the wage bill or the wage structure for the club of Man United. Something that you would like to obviously see happen at your team. So, the best thing to do is <coughs> get the 150 million pounds, you know. Mbappe 
would have gone ahead to Costa Rica the club of Man United. After getting that amount of money, this is what you're supposed to do. One, get in three players instead. <clears throat> For example, I can give you an example of players that are really available. Um, when you look at... Um, um, you can bring in a midfielder like Amaudu Onana for Everton at 50 million pounds. Then you can as well go for Kaveshkeria, who plays for Napoli for like 70 million pounds. <clears throat> that is 120, 30 million pounds left. You can go in, a, you can go out and look for a certain player who is 30 million pounds, who is going to be an understudy. Or you can even use that amount of money to go in and really scout those young players that can obviously turn out to be the next Mbappe. Like, look at Ahmad Diallo. We brought him in for 35 million pounds. But I believe by the end of next season, everyone will be admitting that Manchester United, among us all the wrongs they went ahead to do, they went ahead to sign in a better player. And there are very many other young players that we can obviously go ahead and really sign from the LDVZ that are really promising and really good. So, at Manchester United, that is a very huge decision made by the manager, Eric Ten Hag, sorry, by the manager, <coughs> sorry, by the owner. And that shows you that he wants to keep Eric Ten Hag here and he wants to see this guy stay. But it is a very huge shift from Ed Woodward. If it was Ed Woodward running the club of Man United on behalf of the Glazers, he would have gone ahead to go out and really push for this move and see how much is Kylian Mbappe costing. How many shot sales is Kylian Mbappe going to get us? You know, are we going to impress the brands that advertise with us? They would have gone ahead to break the bank and get in Kylian Mbappe. And for that case, they would go in and get in Kylian Mbappe and not even sign any other player. Because for them, that's what they do. <coughs> you get? They did it, you remember, because averagely every season we've been spending 150 million pounds on average. But... When you look at, uh, what is it? When you look at uh, the transfer of uh, <coughs> the transfer of um, Harry Maguire, Ruben Diaz was there. Man United was shown Ruben Diaz. I think Ruben Diaz's agent, he's um, this super agent of the former of Ronaldo. Let me see. Um, what's the name of that guy? Super agent. Super agents. I want to get his name. You know, let me get his name first here. Um. Oh, let me get the name right. <coughs> George Mendes, right? George Mendes is the name. Now, when you look at the super agent, that is George Mendes. He had obviously had a very good connection with Man United ever since he brought them Ronaldo, Nani, Anderson, and very many other players, the Diego Dallas of this world. Then he told them that <coughs> there is a player playing, I think he was playing for Benfica, right? Benfica or FC Porto, one of those two teams, and he's good. And he was going only for 60 million euros, and 60, sorry, 60 million euros by the time it was like 50. 50 million pounds. Man United chose to go in for Harry Maguire and Man City went in for Ruben Diaz. Now, of the two, who got a better deal? <clears throat> Man City could not go north, more than north of 60 million pounds. They told Leicester City, our ceiling for Harry Maguire is 60 million pounds. Man United came in through and signed the player for 80 million pounds. Trust me, in that season, if Man United are going to have to bring in Diaz for 50 million pounds, they would have gone ahead to save 30 million pounds to get in another player. You get? I know they brought in Aaron Bissaka, Daniel James, but that 30 million pounds would have gone ahead to help us to really reinforce other areas. So, this is what the new guy at Man United is trying to rectify that. We're not going to go for big money signings because Omalbe rather the CEO was at Man City when Pep Guardiola came in through. When Pep came in through, he was signing players for 50 million pounds, 40, you know, and then he brought in Riyad Mahrez for 65, Rodri 60. You understand? And to break the dreadlock, <clears throat> to go in for a 100 million pound player, that is Jack Grealish, 
it has taken them years but they've been operating on players that don't exceed 60 65 million pounds and they're gonna hate to offer them results you know so our live i like such jim Ratcliffe about that and i think with such a scenario and narrative man united is really gonna go up and running and no one is really gonna stop us from really getting to where we deserve to be then he said something that was like pinpointing at bruno fernandez and his abilities and one of those players that man united should be looking at to really sign sir jim Radcliffe asked man united player what united player in their prime he would bring into the current united team he said paul scolds i think that's the player <clears throat> that's most missing casimiro and kobe menu are sort of quite defensive players but they don't have a paul scolds all and in yester have you heard <clears throat> have you heard now this is coming in through from the horse's mouth i've always told you that we are not having a player in the caliber of odegaard kevin de Bruyne, luca modric james madison i've always told you that now don't tell me that this is rocket science i told you if i can't see these things then ineos can also see them so this is how i come here in peace to come in through and really tell you the truth that Manchester United is going the right way. I've come in here and told you if United had a better central attacking midfielder only number 10 like Paul Scholes, all Odegaard, all Kevin De Bruyne, Man United would have gone ahead to see its three forwards, Rashford, Ganacho, and Rasmus Hoyland finding themselves in a position of scoring very many goals. <laughs> that is a fact. You might not want it to hear it, especially if I totally love Bruno Fernandes, but that's the fact. Guys, I love Bruno. I love Bruno as a player, but I think I've come to understand that maybe Bruno Fernandes <coughs> is supposed to be played as a number eight box-to-box -box midfielder. He's not all that a good number 10. So, this is one of the things we've gonna hate obviously say and i think in the conversations they've gonna hate to do and the assessments they've gonna hate to carry out at the club of man united they found out that we can get that ball very well from this central defense through the midfield casimiro and kobe menu can carry that ball and give it to bruno fernandez but where does everything go wrong everything goes wrong when bruno gets the ball because we lack a player who is going to get us the control that the likes of Kevin De Bruyne, um, Odegaard, the modern Paul Scholes, that can do. So, if this guy is hinting about us lacking a player like Iniesta, I'm falling in love with him. When I was here talking about it, people were like, Rokani, you are lying. It's not really that. But now, you know, you know <laughs> that the man in charge of football operations and decisions sir jim ratcliffe has come out and said we are missing out on a player like paul scholes or iniesta meaning that we are lacking a creative midfielder who is supposed to be playing ahead of kobe mainu and bruno fernandez and this is why i told you that in certain games bruno should be taken off let ericsson be given a chance to play as a number 10 and see what he offers because all his best performances have been seen when this guy is playing as a central attacking midfielder that is it so i'm loving this guy guys every time he speaks he speaks sense i've gonna hate to see lots and lots of quotes i was gonna hate to put out and they're really good so every people every person who says that rokan has a personal vendetta on bruno fernandez not a personal vendetta but i'm comparing him to those players that you're competing with that play in the same in the same position with the teams that you're competing with if united had a kevin de Bruyne would have been a different team altogether if you know they had an odegaard different team altogether james madison different team altogether even if it's a belechi easy <clears throat> right it's a different team altogether so in my understanding i think these guys are really right and i'm loving everything they're really putting out because it's of great knowledge right so thank you very much sajim rakliff guys when i hear this i just can't wait for the summer transfer window and it's really not far because as we speak right now it's um 
today is 20th 11 days to the end of this month then april may june 15th so that means we are like how many days those are 26 plus 61 we are like 80 days away from going into the summer transfer window and trust me we're gonna enjoy it we're gonna enjoy it i can't wait for the outgoings and the incomings of the club of man united and guys let me make this announcement i'm going to start up a new channel where i'm going to be doing the top 10 and lifestyle of your players you know but it's gonna be really general and when i do something concerning man united i'll obviously try to share it on the community page and you guys will see it so it's really gonna start i think at the end of this week i've been sitting down compiling these top 10 transfers man united are really going in for top 10 central defenders you're going in for top 10 midfielders and so on and so forth top 10 managers for told that to sack eric ten hag and so on and so forth then the lifestyle eric ten hag and his family the cars of united players and very many other things are really going to be coming in here for you the lifestyle how much so a lot is onto the table for you and you just can't wait to find me there doing that so that is it coming in through from Eric, so, sorry, from Sir Jim Radcliffe. And lastly, this is what he had to say. This is what he had to say that went ahead to excite me as a United fan. That Sir Jim Radcliffe asked who is the greatest player to ever play for Man United. He said, Cristiano Ronaldo. Do you doubt it? <laughs> Do you doubt it? I think United have only two players that are going to hit win the Ballon d'Or. I think it's George Best. I think George Best. Not so. Let me check whether he won. I think he won. George Best. Ballon d'Or. I think we have only two players that are going to hit win the Ballon d'Or. And in, and in 1968, you know, I think George Best went ahead to win the Ballon d'Or. And uh, by the time he was 22 years of age, and um, they're telling us that, um, Best also won the Ballon d'Or. In 1968 after receiving more votes than Bobby Charlton that meant he had won the three major honors in club football at the age of 22 right that is in 1968 that is George Best for you so George Best is one of those players that won a Ballon d'Or but what differentiates him from Ronaldo it's the career that Ronaldo is gonna hit to have even after he has gone ahead to leave the club of Man United. He has been a sensational, you know, ever since he joined the club of Man United, you cannot downplay his efforts and he's really trying to do the needful as a guy in there for you. So for me, Ronaldo is the greatest player to ever play for Man United. But I know there are players that if at all they are kept under a certain manager, they are going to take off because the problem we've always going ahead to have at Man United is that all the youngsters that we've gone ahead to get in under any manager have not been given a chance to grow under that manager for example Yanuzai you know what happened Yanuzai came in through showing huge potential under David Moyes he got sacked Van Hal comes in through throws him on the bus Van Hal comes in <coughs> Anton Martial Marcus Rashford yes Lingard and so much and so much more but for me amongst all those young players i think um i think rashford and anton Martial had attributes to become the best players in the world you understand but this guy had them for two seasons that got sacked Mourinho came in through changed shape of play so it was really very sour after Mourinho, uh ten Hag came in through brought it greenwood greenwood went and after Eric Ten and after him, there is Eric Ten Hag. And Eric Ten Hag is gonna hit obviously embrace Anton Martial, uh Dalo is gonna hit to improve him, even Bisak has gonna hit to improve him, and he's gonna honna hit to bring in other youngsters, Kobe Menu and Alejandro Ganacho. And trust me, if if Ten Hag stays here for the next five years, you'll see one of those boys win a Ballando. Because winning a Ballando is simple. Go ahead, win the Champions League, one go ahead of your national team and perform well so that means if Kobe Menu comes in through and win the Champions League with Man United he goes for England like in the World Cup of 2026 he goes ahead to really lift the World Cup with England being so much influential 
into that tournament, he wins it. If it's Ganacho, after us winning the Champions League, scoring in those goals and putting in lots of performances, because for him he's a forward, he goes to Argentina, <clears throat> World Cup of 2026. They defend it where they perform very well, because if you're ever going to hate to see a team that is going to hate to win the World Cup, not present, not getting in a Ballon d'Or winner. Like 2018, it was France, but Real Madrid are going to hate to win the Champions League, and Luka Modric are going to hate to put in a very integral role to win it. And guess who was given that um, Ballon d'Or? It was Luka Modric, and everyone said he deserved it. So, Ganacho might, Ganacho or Kobe Menu might not even be part of the team, might not be... <clears throat> Might not be part of the team that's going to win the World Cup, but they're going to hit to bring the final, and their stats in the World Cup have been really immense. You know, like if at all Kylian Mbappe, I give you an example. If Kylian Mbappe had gone ahead to win the Champions League last year, there is no way Messi would have gone ahead to lift that trophy, the Ballon d'Or last year. Mbappe would have gone ahead to lift it. You know, and which team went ahead obviously win the Ballon d'Or? Let me sorry, win the Champions League last year it was Man City. So. If Kevin De Bruyne or Erwin Haaland found himself in a team that played in the final of the World Cup, trust me, they would have gone ahead to be winning the Ballon d'Or because they were going to have to win the Champions League. So, thank you very much for watching it through. Tell me your thoughts about Sergio Mraklif, Kylian Mbappe, transfer, snub, explained. Captain Hag here, Kobe Menu, Alejandro Garnacho, Rasmus Hoyland, those three players. I bet on them. They'll become the best players in the world in every position they'll be playing into. Dalo, don't forget about him. Don't forget the name of Lisandro Martinez, right? Good night to those going to bed. Rock and David remains my name. Ramadan Mubarak to the Muslims and to the Christians. We cover you all in the precious blood of Jesus Christ. We out for now. See you in the next video. It's going to be a live stream in the morning.